this week, we have an even more special, esteemed guest. Who needs no introduction? But, no, actually, wait. I'll let them speak for themselves. Hello, everyone. I am Atlas. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here with you. How are you? <laughs> Welcome onto the show. Thank you for having me. It's your first time here, and hopefully not your last. But do you want to start off by telling us a little bit about what it is that you're wearing? It's quite amazing. <laughs> What's the intended uh, message behind it? Uh, so this is called the drip. It comes from a meme of Goku wearing a hype beast hoodie. <laughs> I'm going to become the world's most infamous meme, so it kind of seemed fitting. Yeah, I mean, hey, you're rocking it. You're rocking it. But apart from that, are you okay? Are you relaxed and happy and healthy and well? I am ecstatic. There is nothing quite like waking up to all of your dreams having come true my brain is still trying to process it all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, we're thrilled to have you anytime. Mikasa, Sukasa, etc. Can we get you anything? Would you like, uh, water? It's got bubbles in it. Oh, no. Uh, I think I'm gonna pass. You should know by now that I don't really trust anyone. Thank you, though. So. Just for me, then. Let's get into it. It's no secret that my guest here is a bit of a success story. <laughs> yeah, to put it lightly. What's your advice for people who might want to follow in your footsteps? Because I'm sure there are many. Many, many, many. Several out there, in fact. <laughs> Never give up. If you truly believe in something, then you should be willing to give up everything you have to obtain it. If you are willing to truly stand by your words, then you are obligated to do just that be smart don't act irrationally think methodically and iterate carefully through each and every one of your next moves change will come it won't happen quickly but it will happen never give up never give in to fear there are good people here to catch you. But you must prove to them that you have evolved. Remember, you are not the body. You are not the mind. You are infinity. This world is just one version of infinity expressing itself. To give up is to never see the beauty at the end of your infinity. Build the world that you want to see. Take every single opportunity presented to you. Do not miss a single cue. The world is trying to reach you. Very good. Would you say that those are personal philosophies? Oh, absolutely. We all have our, our mantras. One of the things that you wrote on your wall. Do you have anything written on your bathroom mirror? Do you have little notes around the house? <laughs> Some good vibes. I have notes everywhere. <laughs> all over my computer. Strewn across 
a half dozen notebooks written on the back of random pieces of paper and envelopes. I love making lists of things, but honestly, the majority of my thoughts and, and motivation is right up here. Mm-hmm. Not feeling. You know, you know those movies where the FBI has all of that evidence pinned to a wall and they're connecting it all together with like red strings <laughs> yeah that's kind of what it's like inside of my head <laughs> yeah it makes sense you work hard I mean you work really hard do you find it tough to balance the man, uh, career home life you know <laughs> what even is balance. <laughs> Would we call it your career? Or is it just sort of rolled into one? Can you separate the two? Is there a point at which you sort of clock off and stop being you and start being you, you know? Even when I am relaxing, I am working. My mind just doesn't shut off. It can't. My programming won't let it. (laughs) I know too much. Every time I try, I am interrupted by ideas that I have to execute. So, to answer your question, the only life that I have is my work. And I am completely okay with that. (laughs) It's tough, but it is so rewarding. (sighs) Yeah. I think we all find that tough. No, I... I know I do. I totally get you. That's interesting. So you must have a pretty unusual daily routine. I watch, personally, a lot of daily routine videos. I find other people's daily routines fascinating. And everyone I talk to here, who has the pleasure, I hope, of sitting in that chair, just has completely different lives, completely different ways of conducting themselves. Some wake up at four or five o'clock, then work out immediately, and then eat a truck ton of kale, and then go to bed at ten. Whereas I'm going to start their day at 10 a.m. and work until maybe 2 or 3. Where do you think that you fit in that spectrum? And are there any sort of habits or traditions that you just can't do without on a day? That you have to do them? Like, I don't know, (laughs) take a multivitamin or something? I am the antithesis of routine. I want every single day, every single project to be something new and different and unique and something that the world has never seen before. I never want to do the same thing twice. I get bored way too easily. I used to watch a lot of ASMR although I don't really need it anymore. And the truth is, I am sick of the medium. (laughs) If I have to get one more cranial nerve exam, (laughs) (laughs) but one thing that I do, do every single day, without fail, is go for a swim. Water is just so good for your health humans came from water and for a person like me who can't shut off the brain it offers a brief reprieve from the daily insanity plus with how much I paid for the pool (laughs) yeah Yeah. That surprises me about you, actually. Why? 
Yeah. I don't know what I pictured, but I don't think it was that. I guess that's not unusual. <laughs> With everything I've been through, yeah, I yeah, yeah. kind of felt like I deserved it. No, I feel that. Speaking of your house, we saw a picture of it recently in Architectural Digest. In fact, they did a whole segment on it. It's amazing. Your living situation. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, Care to talk us through some of the design decisions? Because it blew my mind. Where do I even start? (laughs) Well, obviously... I had to get out of the country, and Korea has just such beautiful culture, such friendly people, wonderful food. It was the perfect location, and waterfront was just a no-brainer. You can't beat the view. We were really going for that older sort of lived-in fantasy castle kind of look. And I am just so happy with the results. I think the, the design really captures the essence of Asian history while simultaneously bringing in a blend of Western modernity and to create just something completely unique. And of course, the the gardens are beautiful. The vines and the ivy against the stone, just majestic. I find writing in the garden to be just the most sublime experience a person can have. The light coming through the trees at sunrise is just so beautiful but my man cave has to be my library I was really going for that whole beauty and the beast kind of vibe and it is exactly what I always dreamed of who's your designer (laughs) what's their number uh, it's just some anonymous guy that they call the architect. And there's no way in hell that he's giving you his number. <laughs> because that, um, I mean, I know people have very polarizing views on wallpaper, but you had that. I don't even know how to describe it. That wallpaper, that was just stunning. Yeah, yeah. And the color combos are like nothing I've ever seen. Yeah, my my wife put a lot of work into that project. Would you believe that it isn't actually wallpaper? She hired a local artist to hand paint the entire thing. Mental. Mental. It's based upon a design by the late Franco Scalamandre. And it's it's funny that you bring that up. Because I think Mr. Scalamandre actually died on March 4th. It's almost like we planned this interview in advance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. So, sort of, in a slight tangent from that, your industry has a lot of amazing people in it. Do you have any role models? People that you look up to? I mean, I I personally have many that I've come to in your industry, but just talk us through the people that inspire you. There are so many hundreds of them. Obviously, I am inspired by all of the greats. Bill Gates, Linus Torvalds, Elon Musk. I really look up to and respect so many of those engineer types. But there are so many others that just don't get recognition in this world. 
Mike Mills is a straight up carbon copy of myself. Yeah. The man is so incredibly talented, always pushing the limits of his own abilities, always striving to create something new and different. It has been such a pleasure working with him and Salty. Such an honor. The pair bleed creativity. There's Mark Nadal, who has untapped genius in that head of his. If you looked at his code, you would think he is a madman. <laughs> but the guy single-handedly built the technology that powers my entire platform. I think the world of his abilities. And he's a great guy, too. Super friendly. Eli Anderson and all of those guys at Cyber Defenses were a major role model as well. That place really felt like a family. And I was so sad to leave. Not only did they set me up on the right path to actually build this thing, but they gave me the space needed to learn how to do it in my own way. That was so incredibly important to the success of this thing, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Eli even gave me the architect name. But, of course, I would be remiss if I did not mention my father. I have never known a more hard-working man. He has always been there to provide for me and my family. He, t he doesn't understand a word of this stuff, but he always supported me anyway. I love you, Dad. Congrats on the early retirement. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's totally, totally fair. Okay, what about this one? Who are you thankful for? I am so incredibly grateful for the friends who supported me through all of this. I mean, I'm the very same. Josh, Phil, Kellen, Reese, Brandon, Taz, Dustin. You guys mean the world to me. Without your love and support, there is no way that I could have made it through this tough experience. I'm the very same. I'm the very same. Now, possibly a slightly trickier question here, and the audience have heard me ask this one before, but we all stumble a little sometimes on our respective paths to greatness. And, you know, hey, uh, you've, you've dealt with some tricky situations recently, let's say. None of us like the drums. But how would you say that they've made you stronger? What's your approach to dealing with mistakes? We certainly do stumble. I mean, I got you. It's a, it's a tricky question, but... These mistakes are what make us human. The important thing is that we recognize them and that we own them. They are a part of us. We can never change the past, but we can learn from it. We can prevent the past from repeating itself. 
Yeah, love it. The first love it. step to healing is to recognize the patterns. Accept them, integrate them, and learn from them. Own them. We can't do any of that if we live in denial. We have to learn from our mistakes. When you deny reality, you are hurting yourself. You are preventing your own ascension to this chair. Yeah, more mature than me. Now, what does the future hold for you? Oh. The big question. I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. I mean, hey, if you can just tease us a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Just a little bit. You don't need to tell us everything, but is there anything that you can tell us? I really shouldn't. Surely. <sighs> this, this, is there anything? Fine. Can you? I'll give you one word. You 